Welcome to the LSU Tigers on Sports Report Radio on the phone, All-American, Sam Montgomery with the LSU Tigers. Sam, welcome to Sports hey, Report Radio. Hey, hey, Kyle. Thank you for having me here today. Hey, Sam, let's talk about you at LSU. This We're going to be going out to all these LSU fans. We have fans that want to know what's going on, you know, with the former players, the current players. Sam, what was it like for you to play for the LSU Tigers? I mean, LSU from its fan base to the campus to um, to the community, it's just a really great place to play football. And it was a really great experience for me myself. Got a lot of chances to meet some good, great people, um, play with some play with some legendary people in the game within the, today. So it was a really great experience for me. Hey, Sam, you played from, what, 2009 to 2012 with LSU? Is that about the time frame you were there? Am I correct in that? 2009, I think I left out at 13, around 13. Okay, all right. And you were third-round pick, third pick into the NFL, correct? Yes. Um, what was it like when you got to the NFL? Was that – I mean, the reason I go this way is when you get to the NFL. In the, in the SEC, it's almost like professional football, how good the talent is each week. But – how did the SEC prepare you for the NFL? Because, I mean, talent-wise, it, it seems to be about very similar. Well, you know, playing in the SEC really helped me prepare for the next level just by having a high competitive level every week. You know, um, SEC teams are known for powerhouse teams, maybe a little here and there play um, a little play action but they're mainly get you the physicality and the experience of playing against high caliber players which usually the SEC teams get it usually helps you prepare for the next level and playing against the top the cream of the crop in the world because the SEC it's got your big big powerhouse teams in there that you're going to see again well, let's talk about that. You were an SEC champion, first team All-American also. I mean, that's something, a title that you're going to hold forever the rest of your life. You're always going to be known as a first team All-American and SEC ch champion. What does that mean to you to achieve that success at LSU? Well, it's just another it's just another award, another um, platform that I can say that I left my mark on this earth in a positive light and it means so much for me, you know, knowing that I play for, you know, the people, um, my dream, my career, and just knowing that I did it for a wholehearted purpose. It, it means the world to me to know that, you know, 20 years down the line from now, they'll be like, well, wait, who, who's that guy? Who's that Sonic Sam? And the story of go, you know, go around a hard worker, good human being, and, you know, just die hard, love football. Hey, let's talk about that. Sonic Sam, how'd you get the nickname? Well, Sonic Sam came from back in the day when I was young, um, 90s baby. Um, my brother and I used to play on video games. And Sonic was a character that, you know, I thought was pretty cool. And, you know, he always had his friends around. So it's one of those things that I kind of tried to remock my life to be always have friends around and always trying to do something for a greater purpose. Hey, Sam, growing up, were you a football guy only? Did you play other sports growing up, track and field? I mean, what what did you kind of do growing up? Play, you know, in the in the play on the playground? What 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 are some of the things that you like to do growing up in sports besides football? Well, you know, um, besides football, I played soccer. Um, I played goalie, played some midfield. I got a chance to play some baseball, playing shortstop, playing center field. Um, got some opportunities to see what else to do. I did gymnastics when I was young. You know, my mom pretty much had me active to where, you know, I got a taste of all sports and she sacrificed her time to make sure that I had the opportunity to play and at least have an experience with every sport that was out there, even tennis. Um, mama had me take tennis lessons. So she, she really wanted me to find my niche in the sports arena world. I appreciate her for that. So, Sam, you get in the NFL. You play a few years in the NFL. NFL. What was that like playing in the NFL? I mean, at the highest level. How special was that? I mean, it was probably the most specialist thing um, in the world to be in an arena, to be in a bowl, to be in a cup with Supreme and the top of the top 
athletes in the world. I mean, you know, you can travel all over the world doing something, but until you're in an arena with the best of the best at what you do, then there's no other comparison like it. So that's why it's a joyful time. It's a rejoiceful time due to the draft and so many LSU candidates being picked up. It's just a lovely, wonderful thing. Hey, Sam, let's talk about current time. Um, you, you played in the XFL this year. What's going on in your life and what's happening with your life? Uh, trying to make a comeback to sports or back there? I mean, what, what's kind of going on with you? Well, you know, I played here. I played there. I played everywhere. I played in every league, and I've had some pretty good success with it. Um, my body feels great. I've been trying to, you know, use my mind for the community create some job opportunities um, and as far as going to take off with my nonprofit and start to serve the community but as far as for what's next for Sam Montgomery I keep training and I just let the the sport work for me instead of me working for the sport and I keep my options open and keep training hard keep training people about health and nutrition keep trying to provide for certain communities and you know work my nonprofit um, being a professional athlete for some might see it as uh, occupation um, a career but for me being a professional athlete um, taking care of a community um, living your life right and being physically fit to me that's a, that's a, my normal lifestyle so it's something that I had honor and a privilege to be a part of for so long. And that lifestyle drooling, I mean, we're just running over into entrepreneurship. It, it doesn't change anything, you know. Um, just gonna keep on studying and continue to advance my mind, um, as well as continue the process with um, advancing my body. So I'm gonna keep the hope alive and keep gaining more fans gonna travel around some here and train with different people uh, train different kids um, to try to in give, give the spirit of what I do and what I stand for on the field and as a person to the kids of America um, in any possible way that I can so those are just some things that I'm gonna to continue to do gonna keep it going keep the foot on the gas and keep learning fabulous answer what is that nonprofit that you're working on let's talk real quick about that well my nonprofit is uh, basically a multi branch that works in um, about around four different ways maybe three different ways it's basically a, a system that provides opportunity and not hope and what I mean by opportunity and hope is when somebody comes up with something, you can give them the opportunity to be great at it, or you can give them the hope to be at it. What we work here to do at Master Emerald Incorporated is to give opportunity, not hope, by scholarships, um, workshops, um, scholarships, workshops, events, through collaboration with other nonprofit organizations to bring notoriety to the community through another, through a, um, a X vendor, through another vendor. Um, and basically it's going to collaborate and jump around. I've already done Baton Rouge is where I started at because that's, that's my alma mater. That's where I went to school at. I've done sure. some in Florence, South Carolina. So we've, we've jumped around to places and places. And also too, what I'm getting ready to do, you know, the Corona's been tight. That's why I've been working so hard and typing and then getting my money right. I'm getting ready to present those scholarships before the end of this year to different target groups that we've targeted that such as knowledge knowledge great character and different traits of the such and i'm going to get ready to give the same impression the impact that i have on the field and just transfer that over to the people and not take anything from them but give back in the smartest way possible Man. Sonic Sam, how, how could I thank you more than what I have? You've just been a really great guest. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate it.